documentary film called Suffering in Silence. Correct. Tell us a little bit about the film, what it was like to make that film, and what you've been doing with it. Um, you know, it, the idea for making a film, I was an RA my last year in college, um, and one of the things that some of the guys, on, some of the guys on my floor were extremely talented with filmmaking, and you know, so we made some fun YouTube films here and there. And one of the ones that they, you know, they we all sat down and said, "Hey, you know, let's make a serious documentary at some point." So I had graduated, um, and I had kind of been pioneering this idea now for a couple of years, but I just had never said anything to anyone. So it's kind of just been in my head. So I kind of reached out to them. I said, "Hey, I want to make a documentary about rape culture," and I said, "I, I said it's the easiest one for me." to make because I have a lot of connections already. So it's the easiest for one for us to kind of jump into because I don't need a lot of pull. I already have, you know, therapists. I know victims. I know professionals that I can get my hands on and, and, and use for this film compared to trying to reach out for people. Um, so they were all bored for it. So we kind of started making it. Um, I'd say throughout that summer of 2013 and into the fall, we kind of just brainstormed a lot. Um, and I'd say by December is when we first started doing interviews. And even when we started doing interviews, I couldn't really honestly tell you where I wanted to go with it or what was going to turn out of it. Um, uh, it was kind of hard to plan. I've never planned a film like that before. And I, I have no film experience. I've never filmed anything before. So I kind of just, you know, and, and you can kind of notice with, with some of the quality in the film, we literally just grabbed anything that we had. Um, you know, these guys were still in school, so I would have to come and locate them to get their equipment to use. Otherwise, you know, a phone, a GoPro, you know, whatever I could get my hands on at the time to film, I did. Um, so I'd say um, probably by February, um, one of the guys that I, I trained in martial arts with is a professional filmmaker um, for, for documentaries for a company. And, and one of the things that he had told me is, you know, the documentary is going to make itself. He goes, you, you get the interviews that you want to get, and it's kind of going to write its own story. So I started, you know, I had a list of, I wanted to talk to doctors and therapists and school teachers and high school teachers and students, and I had this long list of stuff, and then he goes, you know, think of the core people you want, and it'll come full. So I started, I started interviewing victims more. Um, I talked to a couple of crisis centers in the area. I talked to a few um, psychologists, and then the story kind of just naturally unfolded with it. Um, the one thing I made sure I actually did not do in this film is I never actually reached out to a single victim. Um, every victim that was in that film actually reached out to me and offered to tell their story, which is one thing I, I wanted to make sure I didn't do. Um, so I simply just posted my idea on Facebook and said, if you or you know if you know anyone that's interested in this film, contact me. Otherwise, you know I'm just going to kind of leave it. And I started getting emails from people in California. I was getting emails from people in Florida and, and all over the country. Um, but you know because of my new job and everything, I couldn't get up and leave. So, so there were a lot of victims who were looking. There was a lot, there was a lot of victims that were reaching out to me. Yes. And I, and I did, you know, I did a few Skype interviews with them. Um, if I, you know, I drove to Missouri, to Iowa, to Ohio, um, you know, all over the Midwest kind of just gathering what I could. And then, um, kind of just pick and choose which ones fit kind of a similar theme of what I was going for. And, and that's when I kind of started making it. So, you know, putting it together, it, it was a tough thing to do, one, without, you know, the skill, um, two, the subject matter, um, you know, just having it on your head all the time or trying to plan it out all the time, you know, I, I would constantly take like a month off and just completely, you know, clear my head a little bit and then come back to it. Um, I ended up dropping all the other guys that were involved with it initially just because our schedules weren't working up, so I, I filmed, edited, produced everything by myself after, after them. Um, and where so, are you taking it these days? What are you doing with it? I that? have a few, you know, I, I released, and that was one question everyone asked, you know, what am I going to do with it? I released it to Facebook, and I released it to YouTube, and I just kind of said, you know, here it is. Um, I don't expect this to be a, a film that reaches millions of viewers, but if it gets that one person that has that impact on, then I did the job. And, and that's kind of all I wanted with it. So I just wanted to make sure one person saw it that needed to see it. And that was the end of it. Um, so I have a few universities. Um, I know I'm going to Drake University and Iowa, University of Iowa in um, October. I'm going to Michigan State. Um, I know Florida's contacting me a couple times, asking me to come back down to Florida. Um, so it, you know, it's a, it's a few places, but every little you know, every little bit helps. Um, one of the issues I had when I when I was finishing up is you know, how am I going to get the word out? Because um, this isn't a topic that people want to watch, right. um, and you know, and it's a long video, so it's not something that everyone's going to want to sit down and watch it. So um, that's actually how I came up with the idea to do the college tours at the same time. Um, and I said, you know, I have all these stories that I'm not using in the film; I can use them in a the presentation. So I kind of started presenting to different 
Greek life houses. Um, and the Facebook page for the film blew up after that, and people were asking to see it, and I think that's kind of how the school started hearing about it a little bit more. Um, so I think I kind of did those hand in hand, and now that I finished the film, you know, it's out for a year, I'll, I'm taking a break, and then next year I'll go on tour again, and this time I'll show the film and do the presentation, because I, I was able to, now I can actually say, here's the finished product. And what was the response at different fraternities and sororities, because... You know, there's a lot of talk about that dynamic and parties and alcohol and the Greek system. No, it, it, was, it was not a response that I, I think a lot of people expected. I think out of every house I went to, the most common thing was is that's not what we were expecting in a good way. Um, I think they were more anticipating me to come in and read off statistics and read off facts and, and talk about... You know, here's what we need to do on college campuses, and here's what schools are doing wrong. And that's, I didn't do any of that. I came in, and, and I said, you know what? Here's an 11-year-old girl that I had as a student that was raped. Here's a, a, a friend of mine that was raped. You know, here's a girl that I talked to in a film that was raped. And I literally would just sit there and tell them their stories. And then you would just kind of see, you know, you see people in the audience start holding their stomachs. You know, a lot, I had a lot of people walk out in tears, um, either because it happened to them or someone they knew. And, and I think people that were in the area, or, you know, that I had heard about it, figured, thought it was a little too intense, but, you know, I would, I think out of, you know, I only received a handful, and I mean a small handful of complaints about that, otherwise, you know, victims themselves were emailing me, or kind of, every presentation I was getting dozens of emails, thank you for saying this, you know, I, you know, I, I left your presentation, but it needed to be said, and I'm glad everyone else heard about it, and I think, once I started seeing that, you know, it's one thing if you're if you're in a sorority fraternity, and you're hearing me talking about this, and you're like, okay, yeah, I've heard this before, okay, it happens to people, but then you see two or three of your brothers or sisters walk out of the room because of it. Right. Now it's like, oh, this happened to, to someone close to me. And that kind of hits a, a little bit more. Um, so I think that's kind of what I shifted my presentation to is I wanted a hard presentation to sit through. And I wanted that when you're done with it, I want you to feel sick and I want you to feel like I need to do something about it. Yeah. You know, I, you know I, don't, I, don't have, I don't think anyone has the answer to, to fix any of this right now. You know, otherwise, it, it'd be fixed. Um, so I think getting that emotional impact of, we need to do something. I think a lot more schools have now started stepping up, taking the campaigns and all the you know all the different campaigns that are running right now. Um, I think this presentation kind of goes hand in hand with those, but just in a, a more roundabout way. Um, you know, especially with my profession as, as a self defense instructor, I kind of get the end result. So I see the victims at their absolute end, and I see them break down every time we have to re you know relive in a sense their attack. Um, and I think telling people those stories that kind of really hits it on a different level. Um, and, and that's kind of what the film does as well. You know, it's not a, a statistic film. It's here are some victims, listen to their story, and at the end of it, see how you feel type thing. Right. Well, I think one of the things that is most striking and perhaps will um, have a great impact about what you're doing is the fact that you're a young man who is standing up and talking about the issue of rape and sexual assault and sexual violence um, and who seems to really have a sense of the trauma um, and who really wants to take action to do something. Um, this is unique, and I wonder what you think young men and men in general should be doing around this issue to create awareness and to really s sort of stand up and say something has to be done here. You know, I honestly... It's and that was one of the things I mentioned in a lot of the presentations, you know, is if, if that was a woman standing in front of you, you know, nowadays I, I would be viewed more as a creature than actually someone trying to, to solve the issues. I think people are just kind of tired of woman after woman after woman saying the same thing, which, which is good. You know, I, I want women to speak up, but I think men need to take that step. And I think seeing a male, you know, and, and there's more male figures coming up now, but I think especially on, the reason I targeted Greek life is because they have such an influence on college. Um, everyone knows who's in the Greek life, so if fraternities are stepping up, you know, I, I was never in a fraternity, um, do, you know, do I blame fraternities or, or athletes for what goes on? No, but I, you know, there's always that one bad kid that's in the group, and as a result, the whole group looks bad. Um, and I think it's just something that, you know, if you see a behavior that's wrong, if you hear something that's wrong, you need to say something. You know, if someone uses rape as an adjective, you need to say something. You know, if you're seeing one of your buddies take a drunk or let you know, shouldn't be, shouldn't be going anywhere, regardless of, of what their intention is. It looks wrong, step in and say something. You know, if it's not, then okay. You know, at least you tried. 
Um, but I think just taking that initial step and and not being the first to, to back up your buddy or not be the first to, to call her a whore or a slut because, you know, she got raped. Um, and I think those are the kind of things that if, if more males start stepping forward and simply just saying, I believe you, you know, I think that's a huge step in the right way. You know, I, I don't expect it to be, you know, tomorrow I'm going to turn on the news and every guy across the country is standing and, and hand in hand with all the women supporting the victims. No, um, I, I think it's going to take years before we see that. But I think one at a time, if you start seeing a few more fraternity brothers in the house, um, you know, if, if, if a rape, if a rape accusation comes up, get involved immediately, you know, that, you know, I, yes, support your house, but at the same time, if someone made an accusation, there's, there's a reason behind it. You know, you can't just say, oh, you know, 